Okay, I've got um, up to 10 minutes now to talk to you about the music industry. Um, essentially, a good question uh, when thinking about this area is what is the problem as the industry sees it? Okay, and then if there is a problem it's identified, um, what methods is it using to combat the problem? And perhaps another question implicit in that is are there any useful lessons for other industries that might learn from what's going on there? Okay. So what's the key problem? The key problem, as we've identified through the lecture and uh, in various other instances where we've made references to it throughout the module, is that people are copying tracks without paying for them. Okay. Um, this has been made worse in recent years um, as the internet's become more prevalent uh, because of the use of P2P file sharing networks and because of the growing availability and usage of broadband by consumers. So this kind of combination of things, okay, um, oh, we must mention MP3 I suppose in better file compression. So whether you're looking at sort of better file compression, um, there's more broadband available uh, for people to use um, at a reasonable price and things like file sharing networks which make it very efficient ways for people to share files, share files. you know, kind of not, not any one necessarily, but three of these things have come together made it really easy to get hold of and download in a convenient way um, music tracks that you want. Okay. Um, so, must mention that um, this isn't you know this isn't the, the actual copying and I did say copying isn't necessarily a recent problem. So if if you go back a few years, you may have to ask your parents about this. There were campaigns where they'd say home taping is killing music. Okay, um, and then for a while people were saying about. Um, these little kind of homemade factories where people were out in the suburbs and they were they were duplicating CDs etc. So the copying of music has been a problem for a while, um, but the sheer convenience, low cost and scalability that a combination of uh, file sharing networks, MP3 format for convenience and copyability etc. and the availability of broadband, right, they've all combined and made it really killer thing so it's really easy to make really good quality copies. Um, and so that's made the problem um, on a much bigger scale than it was before. So where does this stuff come from? Well, quite simply, some people are quite happy to make available on their computers to upload onto file sharing networks copyrighted material. Okay? Other people can search for that material, they can find it, and then they can download it. Uh, that's the real simple thing that they're doing. The downside, of course, to the record companies and to the artists involved is that, oh, where do we get a cut of this? Okay, so this is it. Essentially, the problem with the copying is that it's affecting their revenue streams. Possibly. Probably. Possibly. Okay, there's a key point here because it's a bit of an argument. What is clear is that in recent years, sales of CDs, especially, um, um, well, whether it's CD singles or CD albums, okay, sales of CDs have dropped off quite markedly. And the record companies have said, well, this is because people are downloading music for free off the internet, therefore they're not buying it. Okay, but this is a somewhat contentious statement. Um, is there this definitely a correlation there between the two? Um, and you'll find references in the lecture notes to some surveys that suggest actually that the biggest downloaders of music are also the biggest purchasers of music. And I've suggested to you in the lecture that sometimes people are just really into music. There's a time in your life when you're really into music, and whether you're buying it or you're taking it without buying it, you just want to consume as much of it as you can. Okay. Um, there may be other reasons, of course, why CD um, sales have fallen. There could be demographic changes, which means, for example, that um, we've got fewer people in the kind of prime demographic for buying music at any time in the population. It could be that people have finally looked at the cost of it and gone, actually, that's not very good value, and I'd rather spend my money on books or on computer games, or that I would rather download stuff, and I would download stuff individually rather than buy albums of compilations of, of things that you know the record company's decided that he wants to put out etc etc so as an economist you know you might look at various things here and think in terms of the elasticity of demand etc etc you don't have to but some people have asked about it and of course you can do because uh, one of the problems they've got is that if the sales are falling um, you can't simply put the price up to recover the revenue because of the elasticity of demand for that particular product okay um, and this is where this issue about the free downloads comes in, because it's not necessarily that it's competing against just free downloads, because for some people who won't download, they're nothing anyway. Um, but people will look at 
you know the cost of buying music and compare that to the cost of buying other things, other entertainment items, be it computer games or whatever or whatever it happens to be. Okay. Um, other issues that have come up is that legal download sites are very successful, uh, but there are some issues around them. Okay, so we'll look at that. So people are clearly willing to buy music uh, in the form of a download. Um, you know, very happy to do so. Look at the success of iTunes and the, uh, the Apple Store and things. Okay, but uh, there are problems around it with the pricing of the tracks and the digital rights management. Okay, uh, we'll come back to that in a moment. So what are the kind of two tactics that the record companies are using against this problem that they see? Um, two main things. One is they're taking legal measures against people. Okay, and we catch you downloading music, we will take you to court and we will see you and try and get lots of damages off you. Again, you can find lots of examples linked in, mentioned through the lecture notes or quick searches. Um, you'll find examples of it linked to the Pepsi iTunes ad and things that we watched in the lecture and that you can access online. Okay. Um, and the use of digital rights management, and this is the implement, uh, the use of various technologies to stop people copying stuff. So it may be that I purchase a CD, or I download a track from a legal download site, and there are restrictions built into it, which means that I can't, perhaps I can't play it on a computer, because I might be tempted to copy it, or that I can only copy it onto a limited number of devices, or whatever it happens to be, okay? Um, the actual restrictions vary, okay? But the technology's there, and it's to stop me copying stuff around. Um, an interesting question comes up here is that if I were to buy the same track, sometimes the same track, if I were to purchase it as a CD, it wouldn't have any copy protection on it. There are copy protection on some CDs, but it's not that widely used because it's not been that successful. Um, but if I were to get the same track through a legal download site, I might find there's all kinds of restrictions on what I can do in terms of copying. I might find it really difficult to copy because I want to listen to it in the car or something. Okay? Um, so this is a, an, an issue that's come up. So. Simply putting copy protection on may not solve the problem because people who want the music for nothing anyway will find ways to get around the copy protection and those people who are perhaps willing to buy music are frustrated by the copy protection that's put on it and it may put them off buying as much music and again they may look at buying other products and other things that they want. Um, so it's not a simple argument, so it's a really interesting area to look at, that's it. Um, as I said, the arrival of legal download sites, the, the best known one is the Apple one, of course, look at the, look at the Apple store there and see what's happening with iTunes and you'll see that there's lots of things available. But again, that shows up interesting things. You can't buy the same things necessarily uh, from the different sites. So if you go and look at the pricing, you'll find that you'll pay more for a track here in the UK than you would do in the US. Um, again, why in this days of electronic distribution should that be the case? You know, once you take out the issue of local taxes and things, it's still more expensive. Okay, what's the justification that sometimes it's difficult to do it? And even though the, the record companies are slowly moving over to issues and the use of uh, legal download sites and things, um, there are still long standing things about royalty rates to artists and things like that. So some artists are taking advantage of the change in technology and going, This is a good opportunity to break away from record companies who are giving me really crap royalty rates and to use the technology, use the web to build up a fan base and do my own thing. Okay, So a good example from the module would be to look at the future just happened, where the, the program clicked online, and um, see, watch the clip where they're talking to Marillion, for example, who've basically um, kept themselves going by using a web-based fan base and distribution and, and promotion and things. Um, and you can look at examples like the Arctic Monkeys and things like that and you'll see various, there's plenty of others that get mentioned about people who've built themselves a reputation on the web first and then they're selling music directly and then they may or may not stand up a record co contract, you know, it varies between different examples. Many bands and artists are now using like MySpace as a platform to get themselves um, an initial following build up, whatever. Um, so that's the interesting one. And it raises questions about, well, what's the long-term role of a record company? Is that to support bands when they're touring? Is it support to support them in overseas distribution deals or, or whatever? Okay, So that would be a good thing to look at. Um, if you're going to talk about um, file sharing networks and stuff, uh, then good examples of how this technology has changed in itself is, of course, to look back at the classic case of Napster and Metallica versus Napster. Again, if you watch The Future Just Happened, you can see this nice point made by Lars Ulrich uh, from Metallica about um, why should I be a professional musician, why should take, you should take my music for nothing, if I called the plumber out I'd have to you know, pay for the plumber etc etc. So that's the kind of you know the gist of the, the counter argument there. And with Napster it's much easier for the record companies to take legal action against that centralised server and close it down, whereas with the modern file sharing networks it's much more distributed, it's much more difficult to take action. 
Um, and it 